Hi everyone, it's Friday the 3rd of September and it's 12.45 in the morning. Right, I'm taking a little interval between uploading videos for the Saracen Raw build because I've got some announcements to make and a few other bits and bobs that I want to talk about because I've been a very busy and very popular lad it seems. Friends and family both want me to help with the various bits and bobs and to hang out and whatnot so yeah. <clears throat> anyway, first thing I want to talk about is my channel, uh, the Life of an Englishman channel, as I've got two channels. I've got the uh, Bricknut 30 channel for all my Lego stuff. But yeah, this channel, <clears throat> I have noticed, and I noticed it today, that I've surpassed 500 subscribers. Actually, at time of recording, I have 507 subscribers. So, I just want to say thank you so much for that. I never even expected to get 100 subscribers, let alone 500. So, yeah, I feel... I don't actually know how I feel. I feel happy. I feel surprised. Like I said, I never actually expected to get this far. Let, you know, didn't even expect to get 100 as I said, let alone 500. So, yeah, thank you all for subscribing. Um, that seems I had like a very small influx uh, due to the Saracen Raw videos. So, if you subscribed for those videos, there will be more to come. I've got another four or five parts for that build. I can't remember without looking at the uh, computer. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... What was the other thing? Oh yeah, regarding my channel. Content! Um, as it seems the bicycle related videos are proving to be quite popular, I want to continue with that as well as the other various things that I do. So, I've actually got a mountain bike on the floor here that I want to build in the future. I mean it's pretty much got nothing, it's just a bare frame apart from a seat post and the bottom bracket which I fitted. <laughs> That's it. Um, I'll show you it actually. I need to find a place for this in the shed. It's a GT XCR 4000 frame. I have got the swinging arm and the shock absorber and everything there to put that bit together. No forks. Unfortunately they sold separately. I weren't quite quick enough to get those but never mind. It just means I can pick my own to put in this if I want. Um, gonna need a headset, gonna need everything. Cables, well, cables don't cost a lot. It's gonna need crank set because I haven't even got that. Um, chain wheels. Don't have to be disc brake ready wheels because I've got nowhere to put them on the swing arm. There's no mount for a brake caliber. But, uh, 6061 heat treated aluminium. I drive. Ooh, I'm going to have to Google that because I have no idea what an I drive is. But this bike has it. And that's what it looks like. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea. It's the first bike I've ever owned that has this I drive on it. This. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a future project. I've got um, a couple of other sort of neglected projects, we'll call them, and I want to finish. Uh, I think I've got like 11 bikes in my collection, and there was a couple of them that were not complete. Um, there's another Saracen full suspension mountain bike that's in need of a um, crank set and a set of forks. There's actually a story behind that one but I'll save that for when I do that video. And I've got a Carrera road bike that needs tyres and handlebar tape. In fact I bought the handlebar tape for it before I applied for my CBT. 
not my CBT, my provisional license. Um, and I applied for that five months ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's outstanding job um, jobs on that bike as well. Um, off the top of my head, I can't. I don't think I've got any other bikes that need any work. One of my little shoppers, which is out on the landing at the moment, has got a flat tyre. It didn't. It was low when I brought it up here, and I pumped the tyre up and woke up in the morning to a completely flat tyre. <clears throat> so I'll probably change the tube in that, because I hate doing punctures. I hate fixing punctures. Just stick a new tube in, it's easier. I could do with two tyres on it, really. But I haven't got any spare 20 inch tyres. <clears throat> um, yeah, so there's some future bike videos there. And unless I film modifying one of my bikes, I've actually just modified one of my bikes and I should have filmed that really, shouldn't I? Never mind. <clears throat> um, but I don't want to just turn this into a bicycle related channel because it's life of an Englishman is meant to be about my life as an Englishman and the things I do. So there will still be barricade lamp videos, you know, I've actually been changing things around. I've got that shelf up here now. But they're not on the hallway wall anymore. Well, the doormans aren't. Um, <clears throat> And there will still be computer related videos as and when I'm doing something with computers, which will be f pretty soon. A friend of mine has just moved into town from Norwich, um, and at some point he will be requiring a PC, and I've been saying for several months now that I will build him one. I've got one started for him in the kitchen, I've just got to finish it. But at the moment he's got no internet, he's got no desk. In fact, he's moved in with virtually nothing. There weren't even any, or there isn't any furniture apart from the um, um, guest bed that I bought him at a charity shop today. Because he's got no money either. He spent it all getting the flat. <clears throat> um, and I just didn't want to see him sleeping on the bloody hard floor like he has done for a few nights now. And we were at the charity shop today and we were having a walk around town and I saw that and I bought it for him. It's only 15 quid. It's not the best bed in the world, but it's better than sleeping on the floor. Um, obviously when he's got some more money and whatnot, we can look for an actual bed for him. Something much more comfortable and some other bits of furniture. In fact, he said he doesn't really want a lot. He just wants a washing machine, a fridge, something to cook with. Because I've actually noticed in that flat there is no cooker point. You know, there's no wiring point for a cooker or anything, so... But what I was thinking of um, getting him was one of those little mini oven things with the two hobs on the top. Something like that would do him. Perhaps a microwave as well. Or one of those microwaves that double up as an oven. Something like that. I don't know. I'll have to talk to him and see what he would prefer. Um... But yeah, it's quite a cosy little place. It's a tiny little place, but it's cosy. In fact, I'm quite jealous, to be honest. Because, yeah, I love having all my... Pardon me, you know, all my hobbies and my collections and whatnot, but it's quite overwhelming. And he's just, you know, now got this simple, small, little flat with not a lot in it. So... <coughs> Um, yeah, so that's one thing I've been busy with, at least this week, I've been helping him out with a few things. Um, I think something like the fridge is a bigger priority at the minute, so you can actually eat properly. You know, at least chilled food, which is better than nothing, until we can find him something to cook with. Um, I gave him a little radio, actually. Because there's a couple of bags here. See these bags here, look. That's all the gifts and things he's bought me that he's been saving up. So, I um, earlier this year I bought a little, I think it was 20 quid out of Sainsbury's, a little dab radio, which I didn't like. I've actually got a 
smaller one, different brand. It was a Bush brand as well. I, don't, I was expecting it to be better than that, but I just didn't get on with it. I mean, it works. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was a great little radio, but for some reason I just didn't like it. Even though one of my other dad radios in the bedroom is a Bush. It's actually the one my stepdad used to use in the workshop. That well, he said I could keep. <laughs> I've got a tiny little one. Uh, from the Lidl's brand Silvercrest, which is a great little thing. So, uh, yeah, I gave him that so he's, you know, doesn't have to sit in the flat in complete silence. There is nowhere to plug a TV in, there's no, well, you can plug it into a socket, but I mean, there's no antenna socket on the wall or anything, or a cable coming in for a TV aerial, which isn't a bad thing because he doesn't want actual TV anyway, because, he, you know, he doesn't want to pay out for the license. I suppose he just, he's like me, he doesn't really watch TV anyway. I've got two, because I do like to put radios on them and whatnot sometimes, and I do like to watch, like, Bob's Burgers at night. I don't know why. I just got really into that um, cartoon lately. As well as Family Guy and American Dad. Literally for about an hour while I'm sitting in bed, and I'm getting ready for bed. That's it, that's probably about all the TV I watch and I've got the consoles connected to this one which I don't often play but I do play them so, so I did get asked um, I can't remember what video it was on but it wasn't that long ago I did get asked why I have two TVs if I barely use them but that one it just makes the room feel a bit more homely as well even if I don't use them um, you know So I've got a stereo up there that I don't use that often either. But it just feels a bit more homely with it there, so... I suppose you could say they're more like ornaments rather than something that's used. <sighs> Speaking of homely, my mum moved about a month ago now, actually a bit more than a month ago now. She used to live down the road here, but due to her health, with her arthritis in her lower back, uh, She's got bad knees now, bad hip. She was just struggling to, you know, manage with the upkeep of a three-bedroomed house. Um, especially the stairs, you know, it wasn't easy for her to lug a vacuum cleaner up and down the stairs and whatnot. Um, which is why she wanted to move in the first place. The only reason they all moved was because Mum wanted to, because of that reason. I mean, I prefer it. As she was still down here. I think my stepdad would have preferred to be here still. So would my little brother. Although I don't know because he just tends to go with the flow. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So um, it only took since last year to get this mutual exchange to go ahead. Only because both housing associations were being a pain in the bum. But I won't get into that in this video, otherwise we'll be here until like 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they finally got there, the exchange went ahead. Um, <laughs> let's just say they've had three skips in that garden so far to get rid of the rubbish that was left there. Um, I don't think they actually need any more. Any rubbish now is just going to be what's from decorating and the uh, home improvements they're currently doing. Because the kitchen was abysmal. Because it's a 1950s bungalow, it had like a little larder right in the middle of the kitchen wall. Well, I say the kitchen wall. As you stand at the kitchen door and face it in the kitchen, the back wall had this like little larder right in the middle of it. It wasn't very big, it was only like not even two foot but two foot square. It was smaller than that. Um, but it also had all the incoming main supply electric meter and three consumer units in there because it's got no storage heaters for heating. Um, modern economical ones work really well to be honest but anyway why they need two fuse but um, two fuse boxes in 
to run them in a little bungalow. I have no idea how the system works, to be honest. There's two switches on the wall, like two little fused spurs on the wall for each radiator, which means there's two fuse boxes, and they're, both the fuse boxes are labelled exactly the same. So I'm not understanding how that system works, all I know is it actually works quite well. And Mum said she's not actually chewing through the electric as much as she thought she would. So. I don't know. I don't understand those sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, literally, as you had that ladder cupboard, there are some wall cupboards to the right of that with some base cupboards. And then you'd have the back door on the right hand side. And then the kitchen sink the other side of the back door on the right hand side. And then on the wall where the main door to the kitchen is. You have the cooker and then there was literally a 10 inch piece of worktop. That was it. <laughs> um, so mum, in her infinite wisdom, went out and bought a second hand kitchen. Quite a nice one. So <clears throat> my stepdad's been fitting that, but um, he had all the fuse box and everything moved first. Don't worry, all above board. The electrician himself didn't move the main supply. That was done by somebody who could. <clears throat> We're daft, not stupid, especially the electrician. Did a good job as well. It's a lot tidier than it, or it looks a lot tidier now than it did when it was in that larder cover. Um, but when that was done last Thursday, so it was done about a week ago, my stepdad um, <clears throat> took the cupboard out, took all the walls out, which meant all that back wall was then opened up. And they've started sort of jigsawing a kitchen into the room. <laughs> I don't mean, you know, with an electric jigsaw, I mean, it's been like a physical jigsaw, like a puzzle. Trying to build a kitchen around a big old range cooker that mum bought months ago. Um, and using whatever cupboards came with the kitchen they bought. But it is coming together quite nicely, actually. My stepdad's doing a bloody grand job of that. Um, obviously, I've helped lift cupboards and things in. Although, he, I've just realised he did the wall cupboards on his own. He didn't collar me for a hand with that one. Hmm. I wonder what he's been up to today as well. I haven't been over today. Technically yesterday, I actually forgot that it's um, early hours of Friday morning. Um, yeah, uh, not my youngest brother, my other younger brother has been doing the decorating for them. So far he's done the lounge, the hallway and our little brother's bedroom. So it's just the kitchen, the bathroom and my mum and stepdad's bedroom. We were having lovely fun and games yesterday, moving wardrobes around. We were all getting stressed for some reason. I don't even know why I was getting stressed and crabby, to be honest, but I was. I really don't know. It was just one of them days, you know. We were all just getting stressed and pissed off. With it. Then again, things weren't going to plan either, so that might have been part of it. But we got there in the end. Um... Yeah. Oh, that's a big project as well. Currently, there's like um, a little brick shed joined onto the bungalow outside the kitchen door. You go out the back door, um, which is in the kitchen, and you literally walk into this brick shed. Um, it was separated with a, a wall going across it, but my stepdad's taken that out already because that whole brick shed area. There's actually no door. If you stand at the kitchen at the back door and look into the brick shed, there's no door there. <laughs> Just big open gap. Um, there will be a door put on there. Unless they decide to leave the back door where it is. Because there's going to be a conservatory put up there anyway. 
Um, but that's going to be the utility room, so we've got a fair bit of work to do in there. Now, they had an electrician out to do a test from the housing association. They said one out to do a test, which was meant to have been done before they even moved in, so well over a month ago. Um, but he did notice that the two sockets I've put in the utility room at the minute um, were wired off of a socket in the kitchen. Now you can do a spur like that, you can do one, but I've technically done two spurs, which you're not supposed to do, but it is temporary. Uh, now I've got two options I can do that, I can add them on to the current ring, or an easier option as the utility room is where the fuse boxes now are I can just chuck in a 16 amp breaker in there and just make a little radial because it's only got to power the fridge freezer chest freezer washing machine um, in fact I'd probably be better off doing that on a 20 amp breaker now that I think about it I think 16 amp might be a bit small it's alright for my bedroom because I'm not running anything heavy like what mum's going to be running in there so in fact I could just run another cable through the existing hole and just put it on the ring if I want to bollocks around putting in another cable because that's actually not as easy as it sounds um, plus there's actually metal boxes behind these sockets I've put up because the walls are going to be plasterboard and my stepdad was going to use those metal boxes as a, like a depth gauge because <clears throat> um, he's going to put battens on the wall and then put plasterboard on those and with some insulation between it um, the metal boxes are earthed so if anything did happen you it'll just trip out <clears throat> Uh, again it is temporary and because that's where the fridge freezer is we had to get power out there somehow and it's either that or overload an extension socket or an extension lead and I think I'd rather do it the way I did it to be honest I don't recommend doing it you know I'd always recommend doing everything the proper way you know like I did there these are actually I put in and I've done those on the ring main. They are actually part of the ring main in this flat. <coughs> I literally took a socket the other side of that wall and I literally took one leg from that socket through here, through these sockets and then back again to the socket to add it onto the ring main. Speaking of, I did a video a couple of years ago of adding a socket in the bedroom um, where my TV and vintage computers are and uh, some people there think I've spurred or some people left comments there thinking I'd spurred from a spur again but I haven't. For some reason in this flat there's the ring main which is what this lounge, the kitchen and the hallway is on not the bedroom for some reason whoever did the electrics in this flat many years ago decided to put both the sockets that are in that bedroom because there was two when I moved in on their own circuit breaker so the one on this wall with my TV and vintage computers has its own 16 amp breaker and the one on the other wall where my uh, model railway is was on its own 16 amp breaker as well so all I've done by adding those sockets on I've just extended a radial circuit um, probably could have done with upgrading the breakers to something like a 20 but I've never had any nuisance tripping since it's been in so but then again you know, I don't have, you know, six or seven items on at the same time. Apart from at the bed, because I've got the radio alarm clock and a fan at night, and that's it. 
and a computer monitor that's on standby. <laughs> that's what I've got. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think the 16 amp breakers are absolutely fine for that. Um, speaking of electricals, pardon me, and this will bring me to the mini rant as well. I like to buy random stuff off Facebook Marketplace. And a local pub was selling this. That is one of those lights that you get above pool tables in pubs and clubs and things. 40 quid sitting there. I posted a photo of it on Facebook. Mum saw it and Mum's just stolen it from me. I've got to put that up in the kitchen. Not necessarily a bad thing. I would like to see it in use. Um, to be fair, what I wanted it for, I don't think it's going to work. I wanted to put that above the model railway and get rid of that fluorescent light. Um, the only problem is, because that hangs from chains, it's got the little loops on the bar there, um, it would hang a bit too low for when I'm folding the railway down or folding it up. And I did think about, you know, making it so it was removable, putting a socket on the ceiling, putting a plug on the end of the cable here, which is too short to bring in a shot, <laughs> and um, you know, just unplugging it when I want to pack the railway away and take the light down, pack the railway away and put the light back up. But I thought that's a lot of faffing about. And I would actually need the step ladder to do that because I can't reach otherwise. So Mum's having these, and I'm having the kitchen light that was up in her kitchen down here when she lived down the road. Because that, that light, I took it down from this house because she was going to have those spotlights up in the new kitchen. But now she saw those, she wants those. So I said, yeah, you can have those if I can have your other light. <laughs> Which is also brass coloured like this one, but I want that one because I want to put it up in my kitchen change that thing that I've got up there. There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually quite clean, it's quite tidy. I suppose I could put that on Marketplace for a couple of quid and have people waste my time. Which is where the rant comes in. <laughs> time wasters, basically. I hate them. And it doesn't matter if you're actually selling something or if you put something up for free. You're going to get time wasters. <clears throat> a number of times I've had people inquire and we get talking about it and whatnot and they ask questions and they just go dead. They don't speak after that. <laughs> I don't know if they lose interest or if they find something else which is more suitable to their needs or that they like better. But they just go quiet. You know, they don't reply anymore. Um, I don't know, I'm just a sort of person that would prefer someone said, Oh, never mind, I've found something which is more suitable to my needs. You know, sorry, sort of thing. I can accept that, you know, I'm not a dick. <laughs> I'm not going to get all pissy because someone's changed their mind. I just would like to know so I know, so I know whether to move on to the next person that's messaged me. Because sometimes, depending on what I've put up for sale, you know, I get flooded with messages. I've actually had people get shitty at me because I've never replied to them, but... If they actually saw how many messages you can get, like I said, it depends on what you're selling. And it depends on, I suppose, how sought after it is and what your price is like as well. But sometimes I just get flooded so much I can't physically reply to everyone. It would take me too long. So I can understand why large YouTubers, you know, they... That they don't reply to every comment and sometimes just to be fair they some youtubers don't reply to anyone um, so yeah I can understand that because you physically can't it's just you'd be there all day and all night replying to people not so much when you're selling things but you would if you're a youtuber <laughs> um, but yeah I just time waste is just annoying and eBay is actually annoying me at the minute with all their friggin' fees. I'm glad I don't sell on eBay anymore. I haven't sold anything on eBay for well over a year just because 
it pissed me off. It's not easy, you know, it's not stress free. Uh, as a seller, you've literally got to tread eggshells, in my opinion. Because if you do something, teeny tiny thing that a, a buyer doesn't like, you could get left negative feedback just in spite. They will just spite you and leave you negative feedback just for the hell of it. And I've seen that so many times just by reading a seller's um, feedback profile when I've because I'll always check that before I buy it, unless it's 100% positive. If it's 100% positive they've got, then I don't bother reading their feedback. But if it was something like 99.9% .9 or 98% or something, then I'll check just to see what people have said. And I can see, just reading some of the feedback, that it's just literally people that have just got pissy over something ridiculous and just left them negative out of spite. And I... Oh, I hate people that do that. You know, or they'll leave negative feedback without even contacting the seller to try and resolve the problem. I see that done so many times. I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of sellers' feedback over the years, and I see that sort of thing done all the time. You know, they don't even, it's like these, some people don't even think to contact the seller to try and resolve the problem first if the seller doesn't you know resolve the problem in a satisfactory way then by all means leave negative feedback but at least contact the seller first you know i do that if i get sent the wrong item or it arrives damaged i've contacted the seller and actually i've had no problems to be honest not with anyone then again it's very rare that i've had such problems to deal with but it's not just that it's shipping fees which isn't actually eBay's fault that's the postage company especially Royal Mail I despise Royal Mail and Parcel Force at the minute well I have done for years just because of their bloody postage costs um, and then I bought something I buy something was it on that that I bought some sorry I'm just trying to remember um, I saw something about import tax or import fees that eBay were adding um, and then on top of that if you do buy from abroad like if you buy from the States or somewhere and this happened to me earlier this year I can't remember what I bought or where it was from I just know it was from overseas Customs can sting you as well if you're unlucky enough to have your parcel, you know, checked by customs, which has happened to me. So you then have the customs fees to pay, as well as the extortionate shipping costs from, you know, getting things sent from other countries, especially America. That is high to not only send to but to have stuff sent from America to here, that's, that's ridiculous. <sighs> Although actually it was cheaper for me to send a parcel to America than it would be to have a parcel sent from America to me. Because um, a few months ago an American barricade lamp collector bought one of my lamps and I posted it to him and it was reasonably priced, you know. Um, and it got to him within a week, surprisingly. I've actually had Americans say, you know, they've bought things from their own country, like from a state over, and it takes like two or three weeks to get to them from a state over. And yet I post it from another country across the pond, and it got to them within seven days. I don't understand that. <laughs> oh, it's just... That actually brings me on to my barricade lamps. I've sort of slowed that collection down because I've got so many now. There's a few more variations of the Dorman traffy lamp, you know, like um, the sun flash and other things that I haven't got. But other than that, 
you get rare lamps that pop up on eBay once in a while, but because they are rare and collectible amongst our, amongst us collectibles, collectors rather. I'm sort of thinking, should I actually start that again? Let's, let's just carry on, shall we? Um, they go for a pretty penny. <laughs> I've seen lamps I would absolutely love, but they go for lots. I mean, I've actually got one up there which cost me a hundred quid. A lot of money, but that day I was actually in one of their moods anyway, so... Most of the time I'm not that crazy, but I was in a crazy, you know, what the hell mood that day when I bought that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got so many. All I see on eBay now when I'm looking are lamps I've already got. So I'm, I'm looking through when I'm on eBay and I'm just like, got that one, I've got them, I've got that, I've got that. I've got that one. <laughs> yeah. I know I've got multiples of some of my lamps, but there is a limit. <laughs> I've actually got rid of a bunch. In fact, I don't know why, but my friend who's just moved to town, I'm just going to call him that because I don't want to give out his real name on camera, um, actually asked if I had any lamps going spare because he wants some for the flat. So. I actually had a big box full outside the front door, so I gave him a load out of there. <clears throat> Yama, is this phone actually doing anything? I think it's actually knackered. He's right. He gave me this. But whatever we do, it's been on charge most of the day, and it's just... It's not doing anything. But he said he hasn't charged it for about a year, so the battery's probably completely toast in that now. I expect... Can we actually get the cover off of this? We must be able to take the back cover off of this, because I can't see a, a SIM card slot around the edge. It's turning into a bit of a rambly video now, isn't it? Ooh, something was out of place there. I'm going to look at that number one. <clears throat> if I could get, if you can replace the batteries on this yourself, then I might actually get one. Because at least the screen is not smashed on this. My Samsung's got a broken screen. <clears throat> I'd only had the phone a week. It was my stepdad's old phone. Um, and he got a new contract and a new phone with the contract and gave me this one. <laughs> Literally, I had it a week and I had it in my lap when I was sitting in the van. Went to get out forgetting that was in my lap and of course it flew out of the door and landed on the road and broke the screen. Oh, it's still charged. Good. Right. Swipe screen to unlock. No, I don't want to unlock the screen. It's fine. Um, is there anything else? I know the video's got on for a bit, but... Like I said, a lot to talk about. Oh, I did go and see a friend of mine for the first time in a couple of years. Mainly because of COVID. Um, <clears throat> she needed a hand to put her and Aunt Robin back together, so we've started that. Did that Monday. Um... She did say I could film over there, and I might do that Monday, this coming Monday when I go over. But uh, I might find that a bit awkward because I've never made a YouTube video, you know, in front of anyone or with anyone else there. I've always been on my own. Um, yeah, but I think that would be nice trying to piece together a big old jigsaw puzzle. I don't even know why she took it apart in the first place. Oh, she was going to try and plumb in a Peugeot engine, so that might have been why she's changed her mind on that and got the original engine back in it. 
<clears throat> she likes strange cars like I do. I don't do normal cars. Oh, must be getting tired. Yep, get tired. Excuse me. Alright, I'll end the video here then. And I'll upload it when I wake up. So, thanks a lot for watching everyone. No doubt I've forgotten something that I wanted to talk about, but oh well, I'll have to mention it in another video if I have. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, after this one it will be another Saracen Raw video. Part 3, I think. <laughs> I really enjoyed building that bike and I'm enjoying riding it. Bit of a spoiler, it is built. <laughs> it is built, it is finished, I've just got to edit the videos and get those uploaded. Um, I suppose I could do that twice a week instead of once a week. I might do that actually. I might put another one up Monday. Um, actually put two up next week, Monday and Friday. That might make sense. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so thanks a lot for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Bye!